Hello, Tarot fam, and welcome to Mediumship Message, episode 11. Literally every time I make one of these cards, I go back and forth in between message and messages, and I'm not happy with either. Okay, um, so just, just to make things uh, very long and apologetic, like I have a fan going, which I guess like if you do a call with me or if you book uh, a private video... Um, just know that if I have a little fan roaring in the background, I can talk for three hours versus when I have my fan off, uh, I want this, the, the, like everything to be over in three minutes. Like I have AC and talking to spirits temperature is very, um, important. Um, so that's just, if you hear any noise, that's what that is. And, uh... Typically, when I talk to spirit, I get really cold. Like, not just like, ooh, chills, ghost, uh, goosebumps, but literally like, ooh, like I need a coat. You know what I mean? Like, it's literally like 80 degrees, and I'm like, oh, I need to put a coat on. Like, there's a spirit talking to me right now. Um, and then, so that's that uh, temperature. And the other preamble to this is that, you know, when we do mediumship, we always want to talk to our dearly beloved uh grandparents and um you know uh the war heroes in our family and the 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 workhorses of our family but most likely those people are resting in peace uh the restless souls tend to be like drunken uncles and uh derelicts that are looking to repent sinners what if you will um <clears throat> So I have a million stories about that, but um, so that's what I'm show I'm trying to show you guys in this video, and I am I don't know if I'm going to do this forever, but I'm attempt I really wanted to show how the cards populate. So the first ever mediumship reading I've ever did with tarot cards, a court card appeared in the first house, and typically every uh, mediumship reading I've ever done since then that has been the case as well, and. Tonight is no different. Uh, the last mediumship message, mediumship message 10, there was a page of wands in the first house. And in this one, we have a um, knight of pentacles. So before I laid the cards out, the question that I ask is what spirits are around? Because like I said, there are tons of spirits that we want to talk to, right? Like I'm sure everybody wants to talk to Martin Luther King and Mother Teresa and uh, you know, Marilyn Monroe's ghost, whatever. Uh, but sometimes those people don't want to talk to you. So you just kind of have to like relax and understand that whoever's coming forward, um, is coming forward. And as far as like celebrity mediums go, I've watched a couple of them. They seem like, they all seem very legitimate to me. And I know that there's like conspiracies around them, especially Teresa Caputo. Um, but I literally watch her because I have no people skills and I was like, well, how do I talk to people about mediumship? And she's actually, like, watching her show has been very helpful for me to not be, like, a uh, a psychic jackass. That's just like, oh, your dead uncle's angry at ya, you know? So um, I really appreciate her for that. And, uh, like, like, that's why I'm trying to, like, come up with, like, my own um, little speech, like, beforehand, little beforehand speech. And uh, so that's what I ask. I ask what spirits are present. And I, I also kind of like like the way that she reads. And she's like, oh, this person's coming forth. I'm seeing this symbol. Because as a tarot reader, I operate in symbols. So there are things that I see in the cards that mean certain things to me about certain people. I don't see them. I mean, I don't see them the same way that she does. We're different people. Whatever you want to do. Okay. So enough apologies and fangirling. Uh, so the spirit that comes forth is the Knight of uh, Pentacles, like I said. Um, so as the Page of Wands is typically a daughter, uh, and the Page of Cups is usually um, just like a child or a son, uh, the Knight of Pentacles is more teenager, young adult type energy, twenty, like you know, uh, twenty, twenty-five and up type of energy. And like I said, that I think that pages and knights talk about modality. So this is a person that usually is in a car. Um, or they could have had um, a lot of uh, 
a lot of their ego could have been tied to a car. And I'm actually picking up a couple spirits here, so let's just get into it. Um, so the first spirit that I'm seeing, like I said, Knight of Pentacles, they are probably a Virgo that's related to your father's side of the family that has a vehicle. Um, they could be looked at as like the dark horse of the family, and they want to give you a gift. Uh, so one of the things that I include in mediumship is spiritual work, because uh, spirits need to be paid, right? So we're contacting them, we're talking to them, and they're in the astral realm, but they still, I guess, you know, like, they still need commissary in the, in the astral realm, right? Whatever that may be. Uh, I feel like it's more like concessions, actually, like, uh, like a football game. And, um, it's a Virgo that's related to your father. Uh, they had financial issues, the hermit card, like they didn't really take, uh, good care of themselves. They didn't groom very well. I'm picking up the energies of Aries, Taurus, and Virgo, very strongly Virgo. Uh, but they loved you very much and they want to hug you. This is definitely someone who's like in your family, uh, related to your father's side of the family, potentially a cousin and they want to travel. So when I talk about spiritual work, right, we talk to the spirit, what do they want from us? Uh, they want us to travel. So not only do they want us to travel, they'll also help us and assist us in doing that. Um, yeah. And that's the thing too, because in my readings, uh, as the, I try to make them very affordable and I'm very quick and curt and straight direct to the point. Uh, it always reminds me of the white stripes, seven nation army, where it's like, you think it's cheap to put it in a short letter, but say less, like, you know, they don't want to talk forever. And you know, who wants to sit there and listen to the same message repeated over and over again. So this person is like a brother. And he could be like a brother, <laughs> so he might be like um, darker, more melanated skin tone. The page or the Knight of Pentacles also talks about like police involvement. Um, this is somebody who was, um, I want to say like wanted by the police, but I don't feel like it's uh, for a violent crime. It's more like uh, debt or something like that. And they're sad and they have a lot of remorse. Um, I don't always hear names in readings, but sometimes uh, they are, some people are more attached to their names than other people. Some people don't like their names in life. And just as I was saying, I'm so hot and I need to have this fan on, I'm now freezing cold. So that's my confirmation that there is a sp there are spirits here. I'm gonna put a jacket on real quick. <laughs> like I was literally burning up hot in the face had to turn a fan on the fan is on the lowest setting and now i'm like like i said freezing cold and it's not just chills like goosebumps it is like burr it's cold in here um but the name that i am hearing i am hearing the name jonathan uh i'm hearing the name jonathan and they're like a person who like i said their ego is very much attached to their car I'm seeing like a orange or red Mustang and them giving gifts to people for friendship because they didn't have a lot of friends and they felt like they had to use money and gifts uh, to, um, to have people appreciate them. Which, you know, some people use that, some people use humor, some people use their big old butt, like, you know what I mean? Like, we all have our assets. Um, but so that's the first spirit I'm seeing here. And then I'm also seeing a... Scorpio, Le uh, Scorpio Leo couple, I guess. It very much feels like Bill Clinton, like a very like Bill Clinton type of energy. I don't know his, I don't know anybody's star sign anymore. Um, I, he's a Leo, right? Uh, yeah, so it's somebody, somebody like Bill Clinton, very Bill Clinton-esque. And what does that mean? Um, it means that they are a sexual deviant, right? So we can call uh, gay people or LGBTQII plus AI plus people, um, so, or I don't call them this, but like some people can call them like uh, debauched or sexual degenerates. But like, you know, how many gay people do you know that are going around sticking cigars into um, their interns' orifices? 
Um, and I'm not saying that they don't. I'm not saying that, like, you know, if I were RuPaul, I would have a, har- a harem of um, pit stop guys, too, that all look like Bruno and Miles Mooney, whatever. But um, this is that inner, <laughs> this is like the energy that this person is giving me. And they're very, like, the thing about the King of Cups, which is the card that I'm seeing in the spirit, is that they're a very generous and loving and grateful person, but they have so much that their generosity is kind of like, they're ungrateful for it. Uh, They're ungrateful for everything that they have to give. I see that this person um, was... sort of like an absentee father... Uh, I mean, he cared a lot about his kids, but his pessimistic mindset around money kept him from really spending, uh, which I guess kind of sucks. Uh, and I think they passed from cancer. Something in their lower back or lungs. Uh, and the King of Cups, too, it's kind of like a person who is vegan but drinks into the point that they have cirrhosis of the liver. And like I said, Seven Nation Army, it's cheap to put it in a short letter or whatever. Liver looked like duck frog okay? Um, so, you know, that's a thing. And they might have just been having kids or having their kid trying to develop a good relationship with their children uh, to take a piece of their liver or their kidney or whatever. Um... And, you know, you might see somebody and you say, like, oh, they're, like, irresponsibly having children, yada, yada, yada. Um, But I believe that every child that makes it into this plane, that makes it through the portal, has a purpose. Um, Not to say that anybody's purpose should just be to be harvested for their organs. Um, But that situation can, can make a heart grow three times larger like the Grinch. Um, but I don't think that happened for this person. They were very cooperative. They were a hard worker. Uh, they might have been some type of like sculptor or builder, stone cutter. Uh, but they accomplished everything. Like they, even though their spirit is still hanging around, they accomplished everything that they were trying to accomplish um, artistically. They thought of themselves as like a really great artist. And they accomplished everything that they wanted to accomplish. I'm getting like a Picasso vibe. Like sometimes an artist, sometimes a scam artist. Which is both uh, a work of art. They they had clairvoyance and clairaudience, but they ignored it. Um, I'm getting this vision of thund- the mo- or TV show Thundercats. And they had the ability, perhaps through scrying or a crystal ball, to see certain things. But a lot of the things that they saw they didn't want to see or it's almost like um, receiving a dream of your future and perceiving it as a nightmare just because the future is very different, right? So if you're a kid, you're growing up in the 90s and literally all of your memories are the light blue glow of a television in a dark room and that's joy and happiness to you because, you know, you have cable and you're watching HBO and you're watching... Uh, you know, Cartoon Network, endless cartoons where other kids are only watching cartoons on Saturday mornings. Um, and you have a vision or a dream where you, you're in a room and you don't have a television at all. And you're like, oh my God, what is this prison? And it's like, no, we don't really watch TV anymore. We have, you know, laptops and tablets and iPhones and screens and things like that. Um, or even just seeing themselves as older, uh, they might perceive as a nightmare. Um but it's just the future it's not a nightmare just the future uh they they invested their money very well uh it was their desire so um you know maybe they were like i want to die with like three thousand or thirty thousand dollars in the bank and they did they wanted to have something to leave to their children because they were like i said like an absentee neglectful father um they I feel like that they passed, I feel like this Knight of Pentacles, this King of Cups that I'm seeing, and the Page of Wands passed away in a foreign country in a fire or lightning storm. 
Um, it's the tower, right? You know, so the tower is literally everything from a shotgun blast to um, a building collapsing to being struck by lightning. And I'm seeing 12.12 on my clock right now, so that's telling me that it could have been um, an unaliving situation. <laughs> and, I, you know, I laugh and I giggle because I'm Dr. Hibbert and because it's sort of funny because I'm a strong believer in any RD. No one ever really dies. So when they pass, they have a sense of humor, too. They're like, oh, yeah, like I didn't see it coming. You know what I mean? Um, but this person, I feel like, had it coming, almost like Chicago. They're really annoying. <laughs> um, and I think that, like, to explore mediumship, uh, whether if it's awkward laughing to deter the, the severity of a situation or actual humor, you do kind of have to have a little bit of gallows humor when you're talking to spirits, right? And they really wanted to be seen. They wanted to be on television. I think they got their little 30, like 15 minutes of fame. Um, the world... So I always see the star card as like limelight and 15 minutes of fame, um, which even though that just came up to me right now, uh, they just wanted to have a reputation for having a really nice body. They may have grown up being overweight. And so like, I, you know, they might have wanted to get their weight up or down or have a certain amount of money in the bank. They wanted to be seen. Um, I'm also hearing like a piscine, like a, I guess like a French pool. So they might have really wanted to go to Paris or something before they perished. Um, uh, and there's also this thing about a bathtub. Um, their reputation. Okay. All right. And, uh, <laughs> oh, and then like, you know, I don't know. I guess this person is my spirit guide, even though... Like, I feel like Michael Jackson really wanted to be Asian. <laughs> and I know that that's like, I mean, he could have had Asian ancestry, whatever, like, you know, uh, race and whatever is political and mostly marketing in the first place. Uh, but this message is coming up to me. His spirit talks to me a lot <laughs> uh, about like how he's falsely accused and how you really shouldn't put words in music. And he has all these philosophies and ideas on things that uh, he wished he would have been able to um, share with people. Um, and there's also this thing, I guess he's like really bitter about K-pop. He's like, I invented K-pop. I'm the first K-pop star. Uh, and he also has this message from Madonna where it's like, you should start motivation, self-help, turn into like a Tony Robbins, um, like help people get into the groove and express themselves. Cause that's what he wish he would have done because it's no fun being a vaudeville performer your, for the entirety of your life. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, this person is encouraging people to like go overseas and travel and to obviously be careful. Uh, they are also saying to me that victory, your greatest victories will most likely be kept in secret or your greatest synchronicities will be kept in secret um only you can really feel victorious like this whole concept of winning and losing is internal an internal feeling uh there really isn't anything there's real no there isn't any such thing as failure as long as you're using the right report card or rubric or whatever it is and there is also this message from the spirit saying to me that life is fair uh life is painfully fair so uh, this King of Cups character, I feel like was like a shady character, could have been involved in like kidnapping and schmurders and all different types of things. And they got their just desserts. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> which I think that even they, I think that even the spirits laugh about, they're like, oh, like I did this to this person and now it's happening to me. That's kind of funny. Or I was wishing this on this person and then it happened to me. That's kind of funny. Um, so, and then the, the aspect I, I look at, like, spiritual work. So, like, what is it that you have to do to receive blessings from these spirits and to receive their messages? Like, A, one, listen to them. Um, B, it's telling me, um, like, oh, because this King of Cups had lung cancer. 
that drunk cigarettes do count as smoking cigarettes. Um, so you have to, and they're also saying to me, like, you have to be honest with yourself. Like, you, you can lie to literally everybody else in this world um, because it's for your protection and keeps you safe. But if there's anybody on this planet that you have to be real with, it's yourself. You know, if you like men, like men. If you like women, like women. Or like almost like how Cardi B, you know? Uh, just like be your, like literally be yourself. And it's not even a platitude. Um, and I know that a lot of people are disingenuous. And I don't say that to be rude or mean or whatever. It's just, it's just how it is. Um, some people don't even know what they like. And I was actually going on a rant about this earlier, which is, you know, most likely uh, we're being channeled through spirit, where it's like, I know what soda I like. I know that if I'm at a chocolate store and they have uh, white chocolate, milk chocolate, and dark chocolate, I know which chocolate I'm getting um, because I know what I like. I've, have ex I've had experiences enough. Um, and I've had experiences with friends where it's like I can see them... Um, What's the word? I don't even I can't I don't even I don't even know the word for this. Uh, pretending to like something just to just to get along or have friends. So I was saying that this Virgo used their wealth and their car and their money for friendship. Um, some people use a lack of freedom or cronyism. For a friendship, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I don't really like smoking, but everybody else is, and I want friends, so I'm going to do it too type of vibe. And then that ended up with this King of Cups having lung cancer. And they're not even like a smoker smoker. Like, they just smoke casually or socially, uh, but socially can, can turn to a lot of things. So, uh, spiritual work. Just don't smoke. Be real with yourself. Or like, you know, you can smoke, I guess, whatever. Um, but be real with yourself. If you go to the bar every night or every weekend and you're like, oh, I only have two drinks when I go and the rest of my drinks are free and your bank account is reflecting something very different, you at least have to be real with yourself and say like, oh, I got to, you know, get a second job or I need a new job where I'm making more money to afford my habit because I'm not getting free drinks. I don't only have two drinks when I go out. I don't only smoke two cigarettes. I actually smoke two packs, you know? Cigarettes are so gross. Um, they just make the like your mouth so dry. Um, okay, so I always feel like it's a collection of spirits. Like there's like, you know, once you start playing with the cards, everybody wants to come down and say something and be heard. But the three major energies I'm feeling, it's this, uh, it's saying to me like a, a man who never quite grew up. Like he actually is a lot older than 25. He could be like 35, 45 years old, but he's stuck in this night energy. Um, and I also see, so as I see the pages as somebody who's on foot and who doesn't have a car, because... In the mediumship message 10, the first spirit that came to me was the Page of Wands. And I was like, oh, this is like Brittany or Cher, um, uh, you know, uh, Brittany, Cher, Dion, Clueless, uh, doesn't have a car. Oh, you're just mad because you're a virgin who can't drive, right? They're, they're mad because they're a virgin who can't drive. Um, the Knight of Pentacles... I was hearing the name Jonathan, uh, which I know is such a, like, typical name. And uh, the readings that I do or have done on Reddit, uh, I do readings for people who live in India. I do, like, you know, and people are so annoying, too. Like, I've done readings for people in, like, Eastern Europe, and they're like, there's nobody named Carly in my whole country. And I'm like, okay, I definitely feel like that's a lie because you don't know everybody in your country or like there are names that just aren't typical of a region but there is no reason why somebody named jonathan can't be in india or pakistan or china or whatever people named jonathan go everywhere right um but also people have been able to deduce deduct whatever make equivalents to names so I've heard things like the name Katya is uh, basically like 
Katie in Russia. So if I'm saying Jonathan and you're from Ethiopia uh, and there are more people are named like Johanna or Johan or something like that, that's who I'm talking about. Don't be a dick about it, right? <laughs> you know, so like if I'm saying Brittany, but it's like a, you know, a shortening, uh, like they go by like Brit or something like that, that's who I'm talking about. And actually, I don't know if I'm going to say a full name. I don't even know if this is this person's name for real. So I'm going to say it anyway. I don't care. Uh, I was hearing the name Britt McHenry, who I think was like a news person or a news anchor or something. And then she got, if I'm thinking about the right person and the right name, uh, kind of like unfamous from like cursing somebody out at the, D, uh, at the like, uh, impound lot or something. That person came up to me in uh, meditation earlier today. So I'm not saying that this is them. I don't know. Like, um, I'm not making any predictions here per se around that person. It's just a name that came up to me. Uh, and then I am hearing, so in this King of Cups, I guess I am hearing the name Bill or William. Billiam. Uh, and their biggest obstacle was like sexual frustration as well. And that's a, that's a big thing too, um, especially in the LGBTQAI plus community where people can grow very um, bitter uh, from not being like young, fun, and gay or being DL and never, never really uttering their true desires. You know what I mean? Like literally in a sham marriage and then when they are with the type of people that they want to be with, uh, it's got to be shh. You know what I mean? Like they can't send the pictures that they want to send because they're scared or you know they're hiding something they can't say what they want to say they want to be you know a femme queen nelly bottom uh but they still have to uh what is it per, uh, project or pretend to have this masculinity even in a queer space because of their own insecurities right um it's very much like being on grinder saying that you're top when you know girl you a bottom and then it's like you, and then you'll net, and then this person, I guess, you know, they're trying to tell me like they never found, or you will never find the person that you're supposed to be with if you're a corner piece to a puzzle pretending to be a centerpiece. Um, that's, that's just what it is. And so the spiritual work, so the spiritual work for the Page of Wands, it's like they want you to get a car and they want you to start driving and get off foot. Um, the, the spiritual work around the Knight of Pentacles is they want you to develop sincere, genuine friendships um, outside of having to feel like you need to pay, uh, pay to play, right? Um, and the King of Cups wants you to live in authenticity so that you can actually be happy and not have to drink, your, drink and smoke your life away because you literally can't even say the words that you're gay or you know say what it is that you want like you go to the grocery like this is also a thing too like um this one time i went to whole foods and they had like fried chicken and watermelon and like barbecue and macaroni and cheese and it's just it's just cookout food you know it's just summertime cookout food watermelon is like an amazing you know hydrating um fruit whatever but this internalized racism with me was like, oh, this is like, this is an attack. You know what I mean? Like they're attacking me with this fried chicken and watermelon. And, you know, I'd go in there and I'd eat grilled chicken or salmon or whatever. And, um, you know, tiptoe around it, even though I know that's what I really wanted. And I truly like, I was like, I don't care if it's just like, you know, just like how Dave Chappelle says, um, if you don't like fried chicken and watermelon, there's something wrong with you and there's nothing wrong with me. Right. But it's that, it's that energy. It's like this person who desperately wants something and they can't say it out loud and they're never going to get it because speaking things into existence is exactly how you get them. And if you can see uh, from the cards that I have in this video, uh, I, might, I might write what's, what's where in the description and, um, you know, and what comes to mind just so, you know, you don't have to listen to me ramble and you can get like a quick synopsis of what's going on in this video. Um, which these videos are for deep divers. You know, if you're not, if you're not a, um, astral realm astronaut, then you shouldn't be here in the first place. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's spiritual work. That's mediumship. That's what these spirits are saying. Um, 
and if you're trying to do mediumship readings through your own tarot, uh, look for this. Look for the court cards that come up. I I've always seen them come up in the first house, but they can come up in the center of the reading or in other places in the reading. Um, and just like I guess like one a couple last things. I'm probably gonna say goodbye a couple times and keep talking because that's how I do. Uh, I'm also seeing the three of pentacles here, so I see that these three people worked together. Um, or were working together and they're very cooperative. Um, they might have felt like they had like an impending doom situation, like a court summoning or uh, some crime that was found out or whatever. Or they were paranoid of um, being found out for some type of criminal activity. And they just decided to uh, go on to the other side instead of dealing with that. Um, which I don't recommend because I'm a strong believer that this too shall pass. So even with like an ill, even with like illness, with even with like illness, disfigurement, um, all different types of things that will make you want to, uh, you know, call out for death and move on to the other side. I am such a glutton for life that I'm like, oh, no, it will get better. It will get better for you. Um, you know, bad labor practices get better. Uh, dirty restaurants become clean. Uh, acne goes away, uh, sc even scars fade, you know, um, scars fade, if you got yourself messed up in a tanning booth and you're orange now, that might be a little bit more difficult, but, you know, you can find another orange person, that's the thing too, um, and not to be, I, I always feel like it's kind of like, like this message is a little bit like xenophobic or whatever, whatever. But I've always, I have always felt, I mean, I haven't, pra I, haven't, I haven't put this into practice and I don't really see a lot of other people doing it either, but I've always felt like if there's something that you're insecure about, like, you know, you might be missing a couple of teeth, you might have burnt orange skin from a tanning booth, uh, you might be missing, uh, you might have a bald spot, whatever it is, um, you're not the only one. You're not alone. What is it? Psalm 23? You're not alone. You're not the only person going through this battle. You're not the only person with this illness. You're not the only person with this insecurities. You're not the only person with, um, with addictions and whatever it is else that you're experiencing. Uh, so just team up. Team up with someone who's similar to you. If you're burnt, crisp, orange, find another uh, little orange person and have little orange babies and, you know, uh, start a chocolate factory. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, so, and I think that there are, I think that, okay, so here's, here's like, you know, y'all elected Donald Trump as your president, so I don't feel like I have to apologize for anything that I say that seems remotely racist, but it's like, uh, I've seen it more in like Latin communities or Latin culture, and I'm sure it happens in every, I'm sure it happens in literally every culture, I've just seen it more pronounced in like latino people where it's like you'll literally be at a wedding and you're like isn't that best man that guy's boyfriend and like what is going on here why is that gay man marrying that woman um and i'm sure the women you know women women be secret lesbians too it's just that i'm a man so i i have i feel like more intuition towards that side and you see like the best man is like cr profusely crying and like it's like kind of off-putting um, it's because they're in love with each other and they haven't said it and it's like uh, upsetting because they're supposed to be getting married to each other and not whatever sham life they're trying to build to emulate their parents who are repeating the same toxic cycle. So as we talk about um, breaking uh, ancestral curses, okay, yeah, alcoholism is an ancestral curse. Smoking tobacco is an ancestral curse. Um, but also being in the closet, the hermit, uh, this Taurus, uh, hermit in the second house, being in the closet and focused on the past, uh, not being able to get over the past, uh, being upset about uh, wasted or squandered youth, that's an ancestral curse as well. And one more thing, one more thing, uh, I'm hearing the name Jackie, like Jackie Chan, actually, like Jackie Chan Adventures, uh, uncle, um, but one more thing, um, also, tobacco is an ancestral curse because at any time where we talk about like John Rolfe or 
Native American smoking tobacco, as I'm sure they did, they're most likely smoking spliff, just like how people in the island still do to this day. Um, and the hermit, yeah, the hermit talks about being in the closet, but it's also the only green card in the tarot deck, typically, like predominantly green, green background. So that's not just like a sexual closet, but it's also like the green closet coming out about smoking uh, cannabis. And uh, so, you know, there's some, like, I know like medical marijuana is not really like a term anymore, but it does have medicinal properties. Um, sorry, I'm like squeaking around in this uh, chair. Uh, I'm a LGBTQI plus person. I don't sit in chairs properly. So that's where all the noise is coming from. And uh, so that, that's the thing too, um, even somebody being like, maybe even living in a place where they can't access cannabis readily. Uh, but just to get up on my soapbox for the, you know, for the last 20 minutes of this video, uh, I think that we are owed so much through the prohibition of cannabis um, because of its toll on the environment, the amount of people who have you know, I'm sure a lot of people will wrap their cannabis up in a blunt or mix it with tobacco. But uh, think about all the people who are chain smokers, who chain smoke Marlboros because they live in a state where marijuana is illegal. Think about all the people who have uh, probably gotten cancer and died because they live next to a paper mill uh, and the the environment's being messed up from deforestation and the processing of the paper and just yada yada yada. Think about the sailors who might have lost their lives because they had to use um, non-hemp rope that wasn't strong or safe enough for them to use or whatever the situation is. Um, think about the people who have experienced violence because of untreated, <coughs> untreated schizophrenia or other mental health issues that could have been easily... Uh, qualmed by uh by a, just you know a couple puffs or an edible um or the people who have the lives and families that have been destroyed because they have uh they got into more hardcore drugs because they didn't have access to marijuana or cannabis so we can say that cannabis is a um a gateway drug but it might just be like oh yeah you get high and you want more and you can't find it anywhere and the best thing that you can find is uh, the pills in your parents' um, medicine cabinet. Um, which, I mean, is that not a gateway itself? And it's so um, celebrated, right? So that's everything that I'm picking up on. We've been here for almost 30 minutes. I really appreciate everybody for watching. Like, share, subscribe. <laughs> I know you think it's cheap to put it in a short letter or in a 30-minute video. Um, but this information, I think, uh, when it hits and when it resonates is worth a fortune, right? And I believe that listening to your spirit guides and doing what feels good, uh, latching onto the fun that lasts, um, will point you into the direction of a great fortune. And I don't know this guy's name, but I'm hearing, um, out there is a fortune waiting to be had. And if you think I'm going to let that go, you're mad. You got another thing coming. Um, so whatever his name is, I think is coming through as well. I don't even know what band that is. I don't even know. Okay. Oh, and there's also this energy about like the 1980s. So some of these people, I think the King of Cups has like a 1980, 1984 birthday. Alrighty. Um, and then, you know, like when we're doing, uh, <laughs> goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, and we're doing a reading, you know, you'll be able to confirm these things and then we can kind of, I always think of it as like an onion, you know, just to quote Shrek. And you get to peel back these layers. So I'm like, uh, I can only, I'm a full, like, you know, I'm a full believer in what I do, but I can only really see as much as I'm allowed to see. And then when we make the connection, we're like, oh yeah, no, I know a Virgo who's related to my father, blah, 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 this, this, and that. Um, then we can kind of peel it back. We can ask, you know, oh, well, what does Jonathan want you to do? What advice does he have for you? Like, what's his problem? You know, how can we get him to pass over to the other side and find peace? You know, stuff like that. Um, and that's what I do. And that's how I do it. Um, okay, 
So that's been mediumship message 11 and this is the this is the serious goodbye i'm i'm cutting off the video because it's been 40 minutes and i'll see you in my next video bye